Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding. Mr. Maker, what's going on? No, no, you know, Madeo, all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now at this moment and go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us. It'll all pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, the most important place to go is our YouTube channel. There you'll see all our exclusive content only if you go ahead and sign up for a membership. We love your subscription, but membership is way more important to us, okay? Because y'all meet us on the street and ask us, how can we support your brand? Should we buy merch? What should we do? This is what you do. Go ahead and sign up for a membership. How you do so is under each and every video, including this one, in the description section, there's a link that says join membership. Click that link, and in no time, you'll be a member. Thank you very much, and have a blessed day. Man, we're here with a guy today who don't need no introduction. This guy right here, he's been on Boss Talk 101 numerous of times. He's family, man. This guy right here, he hails, man. Like I'm talking about, man, one of the dopest musicians to ever come into the game, man, when it comes down to our history, man. Hey, it's some stuff about this guy. Y'all heard me talk about, we about to get all the way in his business. Clint Payback saying is in the building. Man, three, hold three up. Times a hold three times up, a hold up. How you doing, man? <laughs> she, hey, she. All right, let's, let's talk about it, man. <laughs> Clint <laughs> Payback saying is in the building. Talk cup. You know man, saying? you know, um, man, shout out to you, man, um, for always rocking with Boss Talk when I call you we have great conversation shout out to kenyatta your brother yep. man i'm about to say i gotta say my brother man all you brother all y'all came up y'all came from good stock oh yeah yeah for sure what's up mom was a g so was pop wow man um i just really i gotta just, just dive all the way in it man uh -oh. um <laughs> you um you talked to me in like a year ago here in the same hotel uh-huh we talked about tupac we talked about numerous of things but mm -hmm. Since then, Keefe D was arrested. Mm -hmm. Keefe D was charged twenty over twenty five years later with the murder of Tupac. Um, what did you think when you seen that happen after all that time? What is that? I don't know. I mean, that whole uh, him, uh, Tupac and Biggie's murder was like a fog to me. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know who really was behind this, behind that. It was like, this man, this man, this man, so this man. So the street saying he just told did. you the right thing. I still haven't, um, I'm not that I really like, investigated or anything right. like that. If I hear something, I hear something. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, KVD's name came up only recently, as far as I know. I never heard his name until like a year or two ago. KVD so. wrote a book, and he talked about it on several different occasions. He says that you know, they pulled up beside him. They was, you know, pretty much in that white Cadillac. And he, you know, they were bussing. And Tupac tried to jump over to see the bullet hit Suge. And it, he's real detailed on mm -hmm. what he's saying. You know, Orlando was his nephew. The right. guy who, that was. He got beat up. He got at, beat up at the casino. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Prior. Yeah, at the right. MGM. So, you know, he was saying that this is what happened. This is what went down. Wrote a whole book about it. And. When, shot, you know, he went out over to Vlad TV, mm -hmm. and he told his story in depth so that everybody would know. Mm -hmm. And then, even Vlad said, "Hey, man, this is one that I did. You know, give my uh, footage over to the authorities, and this is one I did participate in, pretty much uh, getting this guy, you know, uh, arrested." Right. So do, I don't know. Vlad's different. Do you think? I, he asked questions in a way to where it really it had people intense. You know what I mean? It, it's mm. it's not that he's. I don't think I think it's his pers personality the way he interviews. Mm -hmm. I really do like like you ain't gonna get the same interview out of us because we no. we 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 
we look like the people he's interviewing. Right. So we, <laughs> he's really intrusive. Yeah. See, your mama was a hoe, right? Yeah, we're not. We're, we're like, not. We're not. not your business. But it's so direct. It's like you're in an interrogation room. Right. right. That's what so, I'm saying. You trying to go there. So it's yeah, different man. than just having a conversation where you get on the camera and all us talking. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But I definitely know that Keefe D. He said that he was the one that he helped. You know, navigate that that one for sure, and he takes credibility for it. Um. You know, peace out to to two blocks family. That was a terrible loss. Cause dude was twenty five, man. That's a baby, dog. Yeah, he was twenty five. Um, so, you know, it was it was it's behind the scenes, man. People are wicked as hell. There's no telling what the real story is, and it's probably mm-hmm. worse than what than what he's saying. You know, I heard Orlando shot him. And so that's nephew. He probably thinking was well, nephew. I'm old. Let me get my give my nephew life. And then they they killed. Him. Like, right. Well, it so, was it was uh, some say it wasn't the people who you know wasn't for Pac. It was on some some uh, some else. But I'm saying him not living. So why now? Or you know in the hood, snitch is like the worst thing. So why write a book about yourself? Mm. That don't make no sense, bro. That's so the right crazy. there throws a monkey wrench in any reality that he's spitting. You feel me? So then he might smite might, might say, hey man, I'll give you some money to take this rap, get it off of me, whoever's really behind it, and uh here's some couple M's, you know what I'm saying? For you and your family. I pay your mama house off, your grandma house off, you get, I put your kids through college, you know what I'm saying? America's I mean, you know, now these people are wicked, man. You have no idea. And if P. Diddy wasn't going through enough. Mm. That's another dude. Oh. Here's here 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 he comes. Here here's the here's the kicker. Boom, 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 he boom, ends boom. up getting now pulled into this by Keefe D and the statements Keefe D is making it saying he had the ticket for him. He like, basically, you know, peeled them off some and that's and he called and said, Was that us? When <laughs> this, right. when it when the, when the, you know, once Pac was hit. Mm-hmm. This is all alleged stuff that's being said, and some of it is recorded and talked about on different interviews. Cause KVD went interview crazy. He went on everybody's platform telling this stuff. Puff Daddy going through a lot right now. Do you think that he had anything to do with that paying the money, like doing a you know a payout on you know what I mean? Um, I'll leave it at some alleged. Because I don't know Puffy, I never talked to him, and never met him. I don't know none of them brothers, and so I can't say yay or nay. You know what I mean? It's all words. They can say it's Puffy a- went to the moon. Oh, I gotta believe it. His word. You know right. what I'm saying? Until I talk to Puffy, so. And it's crazy because that's the way the internet is rolling now. To be honest with you, internet full of clickbait people. But at you know the end I mean? of the day, this is a real case with people getting arrested. People going to jail, people doing interviews. Only one ain't speaking is P. Diddy. He'd be arrested right now if they really had some up on him. I agree, arrested, with that. I agree with that. You feel me? If they go arrest KVD and he talking all that and he put it in the book and all that, if it was real, Puffy be along with him. KVD got in the back seat of the cop car and said, you do know who I am. And old boy, <laughs> say, old boy said, no, he's a young cop. He said, no, I don't. They arrested They just told us, come get you. He say, well, you know, he say, look, man, it happened in the 90s, man. They saying I'm the one that killed Tupac. Allegedly, you know that's that's the way he spoke that's out of his own mouth. Like who would want to say that to a police officer when you in right. the back seat of a right? Who's cop snitching car? on themselves? <laughs> now I, I know you know you might feel some kind of guilt, remorse, like if you kill like somebody big, like if I shot Michael Jackson and I'm a killer, I still might be like, oh man, you know, because everybody loved Michael Jackson. Everybody, everybody loved Michael Jackson. Him. Look what you did. You know what I'm saying? But. Who snitches on themselves and writes a book? They say that he thought he was dying Why he came out and said what he said. So lad, I want to go to a hospital. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not a jail cell. No, you're right. You Take exactly. me to the hospital. If I'm supposed to die, God got that in his plans. Let me go. No, no. So I, I, I ain't got I, I don't know. It's it, it just sad all the way around because, you know, uh, divisiveness tears us blacks apart. Yeah. It tears us apart. What if Biggie and Tupac got together and did a record? What would that be like? What if Suge and, and Puffy stopped tripping and then filmed, filmed, uh, formed like a record 
distribution company because both of them had big distribution companies dis distributing their shit. Mm -hmm. They had enough money to fund their own distribution. They could have bought something and then set something off, right? They could have done movies together and the soundtrack would be off the, off the chain. Mm -hmm. A Snoop with a Faith Evan or somebody like that, that would be off the chain. So divisiveness just kills us, man. So this is just more of that divisiveness and, and, and come to find out, Snoop, Snoop was cool with Biggie. Mm -hmm. The kids mm -hmm. play together, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, uh, Puffy and Snoop was, was cool, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, if we if we could have all came together, would you know, it, it, stuff would be off the chain. Wow, I gotta ask you about this because I I, I spoke to Faison about it when Cassie came out and she she um, said it. He did it, you know. He had done something. It was uh, he. What did he do? The sexual assault. What mm -hmm. was it? you know? The thing is, it happened yeah, years it had, ago. Yeah, right? he had her sleeping with. Yeah, but it, it, that's and, good, right. It happened years ago. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. It happened years ago. Right. This was not new. So you're saying there should be a statute of limitation on something like that? They had one, but they said with that kind of thing, they, they removed the statute of li right. limitation. Because so many people are intimidated, especially to me, when you're dealing with powerful people, imagine how many people are being intimidated not to come out. And mm -hmm. they've been holding that for years. Mm -hmm. Intimidated not to come out when you're going out shopping and spending the money from the person that don't mean who, been through something, bro. who victimized you. The person who victimizing you, it's just like R. Kelly. Like I said, it, them girls was... It was at the mall, but they said it was kidnapped too. But they was going out and everything. I was going right back over there. Man, look, let me let me explain something. I don't know about that because I was on the East Coast. Right. On the West Coast, those, those predators and and they intimidate people to shut the hell up. On the West Coast, we had gangsters shooting and kicking your ass and beating you up and blah 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 blah. And you were terrified to say something or deal with them because you know. You couldn't expose them back in the day. There wasn't no social media where you can just go on your own page and say, hey, right. Puffy just had me, you know what I'm saying? Woo, 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 woo. You couldn't do that before. Or you're so scared you're for terrified. your family's life because right. they probably And they threatened. said such and such, who are you going to go to? You know what I mean? So now I think with the internet, you can expose people to a million people to where now some if if something happens to you after you expose it, they kind of say, oh, well, you know, he must have did it because she told on him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So back in the day, man, I knew a lot of, like, um, rappers and artists were just taking physical abuse from these gangsters, man. It was a whole bunch of them. It wasn't just Shook. Shook was uh, trained by four or five brothers that was on that BS. You know what I'm saying? And they would, a lot of people were just terrified. A lot of artists never even, they had black, they, they a lot were just. Of female artists. Female and male. Terr taking abuse, but terrified. Taking abuse, of, getting beat up. By who? By gangster CEOs. By gangsters. Okay. Yeah, who were, who were running with gangs. We had a lot of bread. When you. Yeah. In L.A., money money is power. And so a lot of gangsters are, are clinging to you for that power, and you'll pay them for whatever. So now they ain't got to worry about slanging and, and getting arrested or whatever. They just do whatever you say. Go beat this dude up or go here and go do that. Intimidate this fool. But when you're talking about even, like, female artists who are being, you know, beat up or allegedly beat up by, you know, um, powerful men, it, it makes you wonder, like, okay, why do they do that? Um... Uh, a woman that accepts abuse, seen abuse growing up. And why does, he, and the man who abused, did he see abuse growing up? He seen abuse growing up. A lot, a lot of, a lot of like, this goes to a deeper subject for me. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, America broke up the black family. Mm -hmm. And when they freed us, the slaves, right? right. And so they end up not hiring the black men and hiring the black women. She got to go to work. Now she come home. The food is nasty. The place is dirty. The kids ain't did their homework. So now she got to do that too. And the man couldn't get a job. That's mm -hmm. usually he would get the job and she would handle that, right? Mm -hmm. So now she got to get the job and handle that. So now it's like no use for the man. Do you think that they're doing that up. again right now? Because They somebody, never stop. Because somebody mentioned, gave a, a point the other day and I was like, I see it, but then it's like, I, I, okay, the first female black billionaire was who? Well, no. The was first, Oprah? hold on, the first, not even female, they said the first black billionaire was Oprah. They gave it to a woman first, mm -hmm. rather than any man come, and all of a sudden when she have it, then you see the men popping up, oh, this person's a billionaire, that person's a billionaire. Why they gave it to her first? Um, like for, for. That's what for, they said. For me, uh, 
Oprah won't ignite a, a movement. She'll just keep making that money herself. She hasn't mm. sparked a movement. This isn't like, okay, Oprah has her own studio now. She told Gail, now Gail got her own studio. Now this person got their own studio. Now Taraji got her own studio. Now they're not needing the, the movie distribution company. Now they're self you know, contained and they can right. fund their own movie. She's not sparking that. Mm. Oprah doing Oprah. Mm. Tyler Perry doing Tyler Perry. He's not giving birth to somebody else. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Dre gave birth to Snoop. Dre gave birth to Eminem. Eminem gave birth to 50 Cent. It's not going like that. Yeah, so that's that's what um, Kevin Hart does. Kevin Hart brings a lot of other people right. with him. He's, and he's sparking the movement. He's sparking the movement. She's not sparking the movement. Who came from Oprah that blew up? I love Oprah. <laughs> and she's doing her thing. And she probably has a lot of pressure on her. I'm right. pretty sure she dealt with death threats and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they gave it to her. I think she earned it. Exactly. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, this goes back to what I was finishing and saying. Mm -hmm. When they gave the the black woman jobs and not the man, they feel like, well, the man will eventually have his own business and hire his family. But the woman will just go get a job somewhere and be cool with it. Mm -hmm. And so that broke up the family. So without a father in the house, the boy doesn't know how to resolve conflict. That's why they fight and beat up girls. They don't know how to, they're not taught to provide and, and push to make extra money to take care of themselves and, you know, and mm-hmm. also uh, how to resist temptation. You know what I mean? So when you got these grown men, but they're just grown boys and they're developed. And then uh, they don't know the importance of their presence in a child's house because their dad wasn't there for them. So right. you got all these, these boy, grown boys having kids and not having anything to do with them. And then you got women who've seen their mom single all the time and, and, the, and, and without the man, a father in the house, the girl is not told she's beautiful without somebody wanting something for it. You know what I mean? So her confidence ain't there. And then if a man ain't around, she doesn't know what to do to keep a man. She doesn't know how hard she's supposed to work. So she will uh, tolerate verbal abuse in that kind of situation or physical abuse. So I think, and those grown boys, who I think Puffy is, and the grown girls, who I think she is, recognize each other. Mm-hmm. He knows what to say to her to get her going. You know, and, and she'll follow behind him, you know what I'm saying? And so I, f- I feel like in those situations, all the girls that are victims went through that. You know what I mean? So uh, there ain't think- no man going to put my dad. If I put hands on a woman, my dad's putting hands on me. Right. You feel me? So I'm like, my dad was 6'3 when I was growing up, so uh, that was not an option. And my mm-hmm. mom wouldn't have it, you know what I mean? Right. But if he went around and maybe my mom dated some idiot that whooped her ass and now I think it is cool, right? And I'm not thinking it's as big as a deal as it is. So fuck it. But do you think it ever changed? Because then at the same time, you know, with the the um, generation we're in, where everything is social media, social media, and everything is out there for everybody to see, even these kids. Because as much as you you try to limit your kids' viewership on social media, they still when they're at school, when wherever they still go find their ways to go on social media, use a friend phone, whatever. When you have people who like um, blue face girlfriend. Um, who keep getting whooped and then says she's leaving with her child, you know, Krishan Rock, and then turn around and go back to him after being whooped like that publicly. And everybody's seen her journey and, you know, yes, yeah, she's going to grow and she's going to be by herself, and she go, but then she go right back, which a lot of victims do. But they see this and they might not see it in their household. Now they're seeing it on social media feeling like it's okay. Right. So, it's it's going to get worse before it gets better. Wow. Because wow. you got, before it was like, if it was a bad seed, he was at school and he affected the class, maybe 30 people. Now he's online with 20 million followers spreading it to 20 million people, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To where adults are doing with kids, following kids now. The kids out there doing this, they trying to do the same thing, it's terrible. But that goes back to, you know, if you don't know how uh, the uh, standard of relationship should be, you accept verbal abuse, you accept being cheated on, you also accept physical abuse. Thinking, I just, I need to, maybe I need to tolerate this. You know, you hear the, the term like women who are accustomed to getting cheated on or seeing cheating when they grow up. They'll say, well, as long as he comes home with me, I don't care what he does in the street. That's a woman who's been traumatized with seeing their mom deal with different guys that uh, leave her and leave him struggling. Well, as long as he comes home and pays the bills, I don't care what he out there doing. Because mm. they think all men gonna do that anyway. Because that's yeah. all they see. And so, this, wow. the, and before we had like the Cosby Show, we had some positive images out there to kind of say, "No, nah, this, this, this looks like this would 
And that's why the media came so hard at that and mm -hmm. knocked that down. Knocked so now down. we have, now the internet, the Instagram is, there anything, is our moral rule. Is there any TV show right now that's like The Cosby Show that is for us that shows positive um, a household? Um, Blackish. Blackish. That's is Blackish still showing? Going. Not like not like it was, but it's I think still. I think that they ended it right. Yeah, it's, it's over. But that was the closest, probably. Mm. But then that was kind of like off the chain a little bit. <laughs> but like that during the Cosby Show, I grew up in the Cosby Show type of house. My dad was a lawyer. My mom had her master's working for the city mm. in a high paying mm. job, and we all went to college, and we weren't uh, in and out of jail and having babies. You can't and stuff even like find that. those reruns of the Cosby Show anywhere, can you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you Google I haven't them, seen it. I see good times for sure. I see good times, but not good the times. Good times, oh my God. If y'all y'all seen like a, a recent thing of good times, he you know did. how much they rent was? No. $100 a month. Mm -hmm. And he was working, scrambling, working at car washes, trying, trying to, to find get a hundred dollars a month. I was like, are you serious? They that is that hard? Like, come on, man. Well. They made this look bad. I was Some like, Some people have Damn. it that hard right now. Yeah, I know, but I'm, uh, I'm just saying, you know, like, that's on TV. They ain't, We ain't got the rich one and then the poor one in the middle. They showing us good times. We ain't got no money. What's happening? The dad ain't around. You know what I'm saying? The kids is... The Jefferson, he had money. But he was a fool. He was a buffoon. <laughs> Didn't have no... You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no family like that. It was just him and Wheezy and his son. He had his son, right. But he was, he wasn't like... You didn't see him raising him, taking him to school, and doing his homework. You didn't see that part. No. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me cut that's in great. on this. Um... Cat Williams um, shut the internet down. Hmm. And he talked about a lot of different people from Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, mm -hmm. Ricky Smiley, Ari Spears, Faison Love, and the list goes on. What did you think? Why do that? What did you think about it when you seen it? I mean, did you feel like it was needed, that it was something that he needed to do because he felt like these all of these people had crossed him in some type of a way. Um, he talked about Tiffany Haddish. He talked about um, all of them. Um, the girl that uh, he talked that had the differences at the, at the radio station with him. Mm -hmm. um, what did this do for our our people? Far as he talked about Michael Blackston. He talked. I can keep going. Right. Um, like, like, you know, it's crazy. I had that conversation in the elevator with, with my partner, Tiffany. She's, uh, she got my back. She's always like, all right, what you about to do? You know what I'm saying? She always makes sure, uh, I'm on point with everything. So we talked about this in, um, in the lobby and in the, in the elevator and she made a good point. And I, and I kind of talked about it again, uh, just earlier about divisiveness, you know what I'm saying? That kills us. That's breaking us apart. You know what I'm saying? Um, Taraji wasn't really lined up with Oprah, so publicly they were divided, and that hurt the film, right? So, divisiveness in any form hurts us, because that's being divided is destructive. Being together is mm -hmm. productive. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. I kind of like how I said that my damn <laughs> self. Being divisive is destructive, but being together is productive, right? That's real. So, what if of of Cat Williams? Got Michael Blackson, got Faison, got Cedric the Entertainer, got Steve Harvey, put together a movie and started his own production company. Now he can put out movies with each one of them. How strong would that be? You know what I'm saying? What if whoever, whoever you know what I'm saying, even Puffy, do a little porn with Puffy or something, you know what I'm saying? Whatever he's talking about. What if he did that? What if he got together with them and say, look, I wasn't going to blast y'all out, but check this out. I think we should work together. Let's build. I'm pretty sure they would be down to build and they'd be down to even take a cut and pay just to get something a bigger thing off if he's going to lead a movement. Let me, instead of being divisive, let me be productive and hire all these brothers. I know what they get paid. Okay, I can put together a budget. He's paying for all his own concerts. So, Cat Lowkey is a, um, a hell of a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Kanye West with all that money. I'm pretty sure he gets people he can go to and they put, collectively got together and put out movies. All these comedians be working. You know what I'm saying? They can be self-sustainable. So, I think it's sad that we're continue to be divisive and does nothing for us. Individually, they probably got a nice check from the from the views and all that stuff. And we're feeding off of, the, of that dysfunction, of that divisiveness. So, oh, they said something. We can't wait to, to see that. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's clicking on it. Everybody watched it four or five times and all the shorts, you know? So that divisiveness kills us. 
And so I, I looked at it as, as sad to see how, how much, because what if he talked about coming together? How many views would they have? So it was like, man, it was sad to me. I wish they would. Monique, everybody that would that you know has problems with somebody, to uh, to reconcile and come together. We we we're st we're we're stronger in more numbers than we are with less numbers. And you don't have to reconcile on social media. You can actually pick yeah, up the you phone, or you can even if you don't have the person number, just go call somebody else who does and say nobody hey, else it. does that. But we feed off a of division that keeps us dividing us. We're on autopilot mm -hmm. right now. Did nobody white pay Shannon Sharp? Nobody white pay Kevin Hart to go and do what they did. Nobody. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp came on. I just watched something on him today. Mm -hmm. um, now he's fighting with that Mike yeah, Epps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Damn came bro. on. Yeah. He said, uh, Mike Epps, you know what I'm saying? When I see you, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. I want you to, sh and, and then Mike come back and say, right. I'm not for the do no, no, back, fighting. no fighting. I got something that well, I can yeah. do with you, though. He's leaning to the and, and pistol. And so, so. More divisiveness. What is happening with the more divisiveness? They would I be mean, Club Shay Shay is, is, is it's a good platform. I love to see them talking, but I, I, it didn't used to always be like. Or was it all? I don't watch it until the Cat Williams thing really pop popped off on it. Like, was it divisive or was it just uh, before this? Was it something that kind of brought our people together? Um, I haven't really like studied him because sometimes I analyze people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he's good when he gets you comfortable. He starts to show off saying, you're a great this, you're this, you're that, you're accomplished, you did this, da 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 you love your mama. He breaks it all down, <laughs> makes you feel like, oh, you get all comfortable here, have some liquor. So now he's going to ask you anything. You're going to, stuff you might say, I ain't going to say this on, online. He might, they might say, you know, he makes me uncomfortable, I got to right? drink me, I got to drink me a little drink. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I needed because of y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't feeling no pressure, but I'm saying, you know, so they, so they go there and he starts asking questions like, okay, why did such just drop you? Or why does, the, to, the answer is going to be divisive. Oh, he didn't see what I saw, and me and him not fucking with each other. And it's almost like I don't think he's—I ain't gonna say he's looking for that drama, but the questions he's answering, the answer to it is gonna be divisive. And I say he keeps what for real, and he and you keep elaborating. Yeah, and the motherfucker said, "Who else?" Well, you know, <laughs> so that's what Cal was doing. Well, you know, he's not bouncing <laughs> person after person. He say. Cedric, the entertainer sitting there like a walrus, you know what I'm yeah, saying? He, yeah. went to, he went to Steve Harvey. Yeah. He, went, he just started bouncing. Steve Harvey said, yeah. he, and he had to think like a man. And yeah, he was. Yeah. Do so, you think that he really. Did he really sign paperwork saying that the next movie that him and Ricky Smiley do, Ricky Smiley need to be in a dress because that's the part that best fits him. He need that to happen before he can do another movie. And the next movie was Sun that best Sunday movie. And look, that's not even that's not even what I'm thinking about when I hear that. It's like, why would you say that publicly? And you know, as far as um, at the end of the day, man, it, it, it goes back to us being together and being productive. You know, a lot of these brothers are doing whatever they can to get attention because we don't own the machine that puts us out. Right. So we're doing whatever the hell to get paid doing what we love to do through this machine that we got to go to that we don't own. If we owned our own machine, you probably would never see a Medea. Medea wouldn't have to be a, a, a old lady saying outrageous stuff that is shocking to you. Everything is shock for us. They put out shock. NWA was shock. You know, these kids now are saying, oh, I'll shoot you and I'll sell dope and I got a boat. And a, man, it's shock value. The girls are saying, ooh, my coochie stank. And it's shock. So everything is shock. So seeing a guy, a grown ass man in some dress talking crazy is shock. And so they can do that to us, but they, they're not going to do that to themselves. You're not going to see, you know what I'm saying, seeing the buffoonery that you see with us. You know, you ain't seen no white kids talking about how they shoot up schools. You're not going to see that in the, in the song. You know what I'm saying? But they'll put that our song out like that. So we, I think we need to control our narrative so we wouldn't have to be in some dresses. Because I'm pretty sure they're doing it for shot. They know if they do this, they're going to get this check and they get paid. If they don't do this, they may not get a check. That's real. So, That's real. You know, if, if we own our own, our own uh, uh you know, machine to put these these films out. I think all that'll change, and I think that's that's the major problem across entertainment. You know, mm -hmm. why are we arguing, fighting with each other? You know, um, going trying to you know 
why did Color Purple come out on Warner Brothers? Why? Oprah did you got $2.8 billion. I just looked at her, her wealth up. $2.8 billion. And uh, Tyler got $1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. And the movie cost total was $150,000. Mm. Marketing, every, the total bill was wow. one fifty. They could have both chipped in seventy five and put that out. Why? Tyler Perry could shoot the, shoot the whole thing on his on, on his, his, yeah, on his, on his studio and everything. So it probably wouldn't even cost that much. Why? And they weren't even the real producers. They were just hired to put their names on it for you to go see it. Mm -hmm. It was a white guy who produced so it. It was a whole other person who directed. It was all it's all a, a money game, a money play. No, it's a money grab. A money grab. Wow. Did you watch Color Purple? No. Why and I didn't either. I didn't either. Why? It, it, it was... You watched the first one. I've though. seen the first one a thousand times, right? Okay. I love Oprah. She did a thing. Whoopi Goldberg, you know, did Danny Glover. Danny Glover. They all, everybody did their thing. So what happened um, this time? But I, I just felt... I want to see... Uh, like, that was another divisive movie. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's more abuse. It's more... We're seeing more abuse. I want to see some positivity. You know what I'm saying? They had the negative and positive, but it was a lot of negative in there. It was like, what, the first one? He was beating the hell out of her, mm -hmm. and you're ugly, and you're blah, blah, blah. Then but the ending, here. she left. The end, she left, but she dealt with, a, for years, she was a kid when it first started. But in life, you have a lot of people out there who live in that life. We don't need to be seeing that, man. We need to you see something a little sure different. You show wheels ugly. Yeah, but he, 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 he got with her when she was like, what, 10, 11? And got her pregnant. Young. Come on, man. We, we, do we really need to see that? That's what I was like. I didn't know what they was going to show. I might see it, you know, on mm -hmm. video, but I was like, mm -hmm. But it also brought up, because mm -hmm. when Taraji was promoting it, she was talking about how uh, unfair wages for actresses. You remember when you mm -hmm. saw her going around? Mm -hmm. What do you think about, not just unfair wages for actresses, unfair wages for black female actresses? Um, This subject is old for me. Like, Y'all remember uh, Different World mm -hmm. and Pat LaBelle had a show called Auto Night? Mm -mm, I didn't see that. It was it was Vivica Fox in it and um, uh, what's my man's name? That was in Boys in the Hood. Uh, the Dark Skin Brother. I uh, never seen it. Um, he um, might have um, seen it. But anyway, they they ran it. They, it was Def Jeff. So Kathleen. were they saying the same thing too back then? No, 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 no. But at some point, Martin and all the shows, they got canceled at the same time. Mm. So an actress friend of mine, uh, Monica Calhoun, I think her car was in the shower. I don't can't remember what reason, but I was taken around to three different auditions. Okay. Each audition, everybody but like Holly Berry and Angela, uh, uh, what's her name? Winbush? No, the, the... Bassett. Bassett. Handsome Bassett and Holly Berry, the only ones not at the audition. Everybody was there. I saw... Um, uh, damn, I'm, I'm terrible with names. It's but okay. The girl that was in... Um, she was one of the four girls in uh, Waiting to Excel. Oh, it was oh, oh, oh. Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Um, Whitney uh, Houston. The one that always played all the Tyler, Tyler Perry movies as like the mama or the grandma. No, 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 not, not her, her, not her, not her. Okay. She was also in Boomerang. She was walking the dog. And, oh, and, oh, oh. Oh, Marcus. Oh. With a short hair. She had them corn toes. She had yeah. them corns on yeah, her toes. Oh, yeah. her. Okay. Yeah. Damn, what the hell is her name? I don't know her. She's also in, in Harlem Nights. She her pussy's so good, you throw it in the air. <laughs> Damn, I it'll come. So to me. anyway, so but she happened? was there. Uh, like this is when different worlds. So Jenny Pinkett, like all the cast of them was there, Je and Je um, Vivica Fox was there. And there was a whole bunch of them. Like we kept running into Vivica Fox, and Vivica was like, "This is some bullshit." Because I've seen them all together at clubs. They're like, "Hey, girl, what's up? Right, what's up?" You know what I'm saying? At the at the audition, nigga, it's game on. They look at you like, bitch, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, damn, it's tense in the motherfucker. Like, y'all ain't saying shit to each other. Like, I know y'all friends. And then Vic was like, this is some bullshit. He said, ain't none of us working. She said, all of us going to the same goddamn audition, fighting for the same little punk ass three parts, and it's like twenty of us looking for work. That's a goddamn shame. That so crazy. that was like 1990. So shit ain't really changed. And so. Um, like we don't have, we don't recognize our economic strength as black people. And so, you know, whites keep f putting out movies that pump them up and kind of break us down. So we, we never really felt our value, you know what I'm saying? Like they yep, never really yep. had a, a, a superhero movie for the longest to Black Panther and that sold how many units, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that went crazy. 
So now we kind of see it, but Hollywood ain't caught up to that. But then we're seeing now that we do have some black filmmakers, some black producers, some black, you know, so it should have gotten better. Yeah, but uh, a lot of these execs that run these films is homosexuals. So they, they ain't really looking at the woman off top. That's real. That's why a lot of women aren't making as much money as men, I think. Mm. That's my personal opinion. No. And I'm mm. sticking to it. Mm. But uh, I'm sorry I hit this mic. So, um, and then I think economically, you know, it's the white man, the white woman, the black man, the black woman. So I just think they look at her as she's not, if she's not in this movie, it's not gonna matter. I think she's we're just putting a black the person in here for credibility for, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I, I really don't think they value uh, them like that. Mm. that it's right? like they don't value the black man like that, but if he can make some money, cool. But until black women, I think at this point, need to be um, self-sufficient. Here we go again, we need to come together. Mm -hmm. Oprah or whoever needs to come together and start a film company and now put out the movies that, that we can make. If they do a, a sci-fi movie with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett and Oprah in it and, and Tyler Perry in it, it'll blow up like some Star Wars or something like that. We have the money to do it. We got the acting chops to do it. We can be shot by us. It can be filmed, edited by us, scored by us. And if we did that, now, boom. We're, we're going to support that like crazy. Everybody else going to support it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they did Black Panther. So at that point, ain't going to be no more crying about getting a half a million in a movie. Now your movie just generated $300 million. Mm -hmm. They can pay you $20 million. Mm -hmm. Did you watch Super Bowl? Yeah. What do you think about Usher's um, halftime performance? Yeah, he's in it Vegas. It was solid. <laughs> I hope I don't see him. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the production of it was off the chain. Mm -hmm. The production of it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The production of it. Get into the rest of it. I mean, I like the dancers. I like the clock <laughs> yeah. he was dancing on. His skates were, you know what I'm saying? They look Whatever. smooth. Whatever. You, you know, know what exactly saying? what part the, I'm the, trying the, to the get to. The outfits was tight. <laughs> and, and the piano that um, Alicia, Alicia Keys was Keys. playing, that was, that, was, that was tight as hell. But you know. And her outfit. Although all of that was tight, the one thing that everybody started talking about, do you feel like he was inappropriate? Oh, you're talking about him grabbing on Alicia? Yes. There's a fine line with that. Okay, tell me about that. Now. Because I heard after that, did you hear that he just got married? Yeah. So, so it's like right after the, the show. Yeah, but, you know. It, it's, it's I didn't feel like there see, was nothing past, but when I look at the comments... Yeah. Man, people are going in. Oh, right. if I was Swiss Beats and if I was this, 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 and they're going off. I had that conversation with a whole bunch of people. Said, he said, this nigga he was made hugged? it to his wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, if you was hugging on um, Suge's girl and Suge was there, oh, man, you wouldn't make it home. You know mm. what I'm saying? But it, it's, it's crazy about entertainment. Film, mm -hmm. actors and actresses, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. But I'm just being technical. Right. For us normal people, kissing somebody else, or, uh, kissing somebody else on the lips while you're in a relationship, is cheating. Is that not, right. It's cheating. But actors and actresses but actors get and a pass. Are, are only mentally if, conditioned. Only if the cameras are rolling and you're getting paid for it. Right. But the, still, the act of kissing, if you did that and in, in, without right. all that, it's cheating. So the average person isn't mentally conditioned. It's like, you put your lips on somebody else. It's on. Fuck you. You know, you cheated on me. You know what I'm saying? So, but I did an actress and she told me she got a part in the movie and then she told me she had to do, I broke up with her before she even shot the movie. Uh -uh. I was like, I, you can I ain't grown it. enough, I ain't mature enough to handle my woman, mm, kiss on some dude and come home and want to kiss well, me. Well, Alicia Keys is not an actress. So, that's their mentality. Entertainment, they do stuff that I think that'll sizzle and get the crowd into it. So, Janet, she get, calls a guy on stage mm -hmm. and dances all on him and twerks and all. You know what I'm saying? Right. Madonna's kissing Britney Spears. You know what I'm saying? They probably wouldn't do that outside the stage. I'm pretty sure. You know sure. what? My first, my first you know? thoughts was, and I said this, I said, I guarantee you, Usher went to Swiss Beats behind the stage before he went on stage. He probably did. And say, hey, homie, this is what we going to do. Because everybody know me for this, whatever. It ain't going to be. It's going to get gonna likes. Be. It's going to get likes. Right. It's going to get gonna, views. Right. The more views I get, the more yeah, that's we That's what it's all about, you. to be not, honest with you. So, right. So, so and don't it trip. Work. 
I think that's what they did it for. I really think that's what it is. You're right. I think he did because say it looks Swiss. We're going to try to get some lights out of this. You got to think about it. When he he went behind her and he hold her, he didn't hold her and pull her against him or do anything that was... I, I didn't see that. He squeezed her and she laughed like, okay. She had that look like, all right, motherfucker, don't take this shit too far. <laughs> that's the look she gives him. <laughs> Wow. It looked like, oh, hey. It looked like, mm, all right. Like, like, <laughs> I got to ask Swiss you. ain't no punk. You know what I'm saying? I got to ask you about uh, the. Uh, I wouldn't be cool with it. Yeah, you broke I'd up. Be with my, I'd be on my skates trying to chase him down. Like, you hey, broke up with your girl you before do? she even went to the show. Yeah, yeah. She told me I had to kiss Shoot. a guy and show my titties. I said, oh, is that right? And he broke up with her. Wow. That's the shame. Let me, let, me, let me ask you about the Hollywood started. Tupac got there. Something else that happened since we was on there. Like he got the star on the walk of fame. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think about that? I think it was overdue. And he got a street in his name as well. Yep. I think it's overdue. Why do you think it take him so long to give like our icon and our iconic figures, uh, you know, their, 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 uh, their just due? It, it seems like they give, like you don't have to have a high accolade or something like that. If you're popular in certain genres, they give you a star or you have high accolades. I, mean, I, don't, I think you even have to put yourself on a list or something. I don't, I don't know how they give them the stars, but they should have gave Tupac a star. But I, I don't think they realized, America didn't realize, I'm saying non-blacks, realize the influence he, he left us with being 25. Yeah, yeah, he was very young. The, the, the level of work, the movies he did, the, what he accomplished from nothing. He's not a trained actor. He, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he ended up doing mad, mad movies, you know. He and he killed him. He was and bit and juice. He was he was bomb. He was a beast. I forgot. I'm looking at Tupac. I was a bitch of a fool. And uh, you know what I'm saying? In his records, he was he was. Uh, I've seen him work, and so he's extremely talented. He he almost burped the the song. It's so fast. He writing like crazy, and he's just what a guy. He's just writing scribble scrabble. And he's like, I'm ready. And he busts, and he'd be something, you know, he, he'd have, he needs his passion, whatever he felt about. He felt bad about somebody dying, he talked about that. He wanna talk about his mama, he, he talked about killing, he was so versatile. I feel like he just talked about what was passionate to him and it came out in his songs. I think that's why people gravitate to him because the passion he has in his record. So he's not like busting and his little wordplay was so off the chain. His the passion he got, he get mad at you, he hitting you up, boys. Oh, he going there. Your mama, your bitch, your girl, your bitch. You know what I'm saying? So. Wow. Do you okay. think, okay, and, and when you look at, like, there's a lot of times, man, you hear Easy e and, and you know, uh, Easy e uh, uh, R.I.P. to Easy, or, mm -hmm. you know, him and Ice Cube. How do you think their relationship was when Easy passed away for real? Do you think it's what the movie predicted? Uh. Characterized, yep. They 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 were divided, divided by Heller. Heller was Easy E's client, so he's gonna look out for him and try and get whatever he can get. And old school um, uh, record business is to rape the artist. Record companies get like 80, 90 percent of the record. Two. Artists get like nine, ten percent. Dog, it's sad. It's Do terrible. you think? Easy E and the AIDS thing was their um, foul play. I think money was M money. The the because a, a lot of money came in, and Easy was holding on to a whole lot of it. And at the time, like uh, uh, when Ice Cube left the group, he was living at home driving a Suzuki Samurai. Okay, and so he's from One Eleven Crip Hood, and I I know people in that neighborhood, and they would tell me. You know, man, and Dre would have a little Benz, but not live in a dope house. Easy had the big mansion. He had the 850. He had the big Benz. He had the this. He had the that. And it was like, God damn. You see the difference. Red and yellow was broke. You see this fool in a white, all white, custom white, with the white interior and with the rims. And every time you see him, he was in something different. Fresh clothes, his house, he had these mansion parties with the giant pool and a thousand more people there and he feeding and drinking. You see the difference, so I, I see why. But I think I think it's just it's just money, man. We never really had it like that. No. 
We You're never had like right. that. His dad didn't have it like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure right. none of his uncles said, hey, man, you don't do people like that. Because divisiveness. If Easy would have stuck around and that trip and that being greedy, he would have Ice Cube, Dre, Eminem, Ren, 50 Cent, Snoop Dogg, Nate Dogg, The Dog Pound, Lady of Rage. You know what I'm saying? You can go on down the line. Uh, uh, G Unit. That'd be all under Easy E if he wouldn't have did Dre like that. Same thing with Suge. Should want to control and, and divisiveness and stuff like that. Got Dre wanting to leave, and now, you know what I mean? He missed, uh, uh, should missed out on having Dre, Eminem, T Tupac for a long time, Snoop for a long time. There's no telling what, if we came together, what, what would have happened? He'd be out right now, because Suge is, a, is a, a, a very smart dude. He's way smarter than people give him credit for. He made a lot of things happen from thinking. It wasn't so much muscle, it was thinking. So if we came together. Do you like the, the podcast, the new one he's doing with Dave Mays? The AI? Uh, or he's just doing it's love hate. from jail? It's love hate, you know what I'm saying? Um, because he's he's spilling the beans on a whole lot of people. And it's more divisiveness. Anytime divisive for me, I'm not I'm I'm not cool with it, you know. Yeah. And some people like if you're a predator and you've been behind doors raping people and all that stuff, I think they need to be exposed. So that part, yeah. You know what I mean? But anything else, you know, if you just want to be talking stuff or airing out uh, grievances, I think that should be done in private, mm -hmm. like you said. We 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 the only ones doing that. You don't see like Robbie Downey Jr. tripping off of, you know what I'm saying? Any mm -hmm. of them actors, you know what I'm saying? Tom Cruise or beefing with somebody and they out there on the line. The, yeah, when I see Robbie Downey Jr., I'm going to show me hey now, man. I'm going to knock his teeth out. You know what I'm saying? You don't see them you going see that. You see us doing that all day long. Wow, and that's sad. That's the sad. You don't hear yeah. Taylor Swift going off on Lady Gaga. You don't hear nobody going off on it's nobody. Just us. It's just us. Wow. As you talk about Taylor Swift, I was reading where um, Super Bowl, you mm -hmm. know, Kanye went to Super Bowl. Taylor Swift, of course, was there. They show shots of her taking shots right. and stuff. Well, they made it seem like Kanye West purposely got some seats that was like literally like right underneath where she was just to upstage her. Upstage her. Right. And allegedly she had him kicked out. Yeah, I heard, I heard that too. Wow. I saw that today. I'm like... Do you think that hey. is true? Because allegedly, allegedly, that's what they're saying. Can I think it's possible? Yeah, I didn't. You think she has that much power? I don't to, think. To I, did you guys see him? Get, in the, you watched the game? Ah, uh, no, we didn't I, get a chance to watch the game. I, yeah. I didn't see Kanye. Really? Yeah. But they showed Taylor. I saw him like him and his wife walking around like look like some VIP section on the field, but mm -hmm. I never see where he sat. He sat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then the whole the whole Taylor Swift. You know, she she brings ratings. She got kids who don't even care about football, watching football. Watching now. football. And so I, I I could see them saying, hey, Taylor Swift feels uncomfortable with this fool here. Get him out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's worth a couple hundred thousand. She's worth a billion. Get him out of here. Yeah, ever since she, he, ever since he did that to her on um, stage where he walked Went on up. on stage. Yeah. And it's been a thing ever yeah. since Yeah, I don't that. know if she ever even got over that. I don't think so. But wow. he, 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 you know, Kanye West is not crazy. Kanye one knows what he's he doing. He calculates everything he does. So now, if you look up his name, how many hits he got since the Super Bowl, he probably got a trillion hits of people looking at his music. They know he just had new videos. music just fall. Right, just all dropped. that. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of celebrities do stuff that causes drama because they want you to say their name and some of the music come out, mm -hmm. they ain't got to promote his heart. Do you watch boxing? Uh... I don't really care about it too much lately, but I watch it every now and then. Have you, um, you know, you have the Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney coming up in April. Oh, okay. Do you? Yeah, I got, can y'all get tickets? Can y'all get tickets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who we up, man? I've never been to a fight. We want to go to, to a fight. Oh, okay. I'm trying to go one in San Francisco. Well, he's out here. Yeah. I want to go. Okay. That's fine. So who you think? It is out win? here April the 20th. Yeah. Okay. Who you think on, who you think got that? Uh, you know, but these fights, I think they're 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 fixed too. You think so? Everything's fixed. I I I I'll, my uh, my godfather Donald. I mean, he he watches fights. He's probably watching the fight right now. He watches all the fights. So if I go see him and kick it with him, we will be watching fights. And I'll be like, all right, it might be three, four fights. I'm like, all right, who you gonna win? He might say this dude. And I'm like, that dude looks kind of out of shape. This dude looks cut up. I think he gonna win. And then the out of shape dude wins. I can't predict him. 
So I don't know who's going to win. I can't call. I try. I'm like, oh, he's going to get beat up. And then he get beat up. I'm like, oh, man. Damn. I just really think, like, like when you um, go back and you start to look at all the different things that transpired over the last year since we, you know, we had our uh, last interview, mm -hmm. it's crazy how, you know, the West Coast – uh, artist uh, Crip Mac was he was he was arrested and put back in jail. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a new guy down there in your city now. Gunplay le left the gunplay. Mm -hmm. I just interviewed him. Like well, that's what's up. when you look at all of the different things when it come down to the gang violence and the stuff that has happened over the years. What do you think? What What do you think? Is it gotten any better? or Is it gotten worse? Um, it it goes back to me with shock. Because these brothers, even though they're gang banging, they could talk about something else. But they're talking about being hard and how they roll up. And if they do this, they're going to do you like that. And, you know, goes back to the fatherless. I think this the last 15 years has been a lot of uh, fatherless kids. Because, like, in rap, it shows. It's like fatherless kids, you know, you're not around them doing their – when they grow up now when they're adults and they're out there doing their thing and you notice them and you're like, oh, he doesn't do stuff like he's supposed to, like a real man should because he ain't nobody teach him. So like with rap, you know, we, 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 to come in as a rapper to get accepted, you had to be different when we grew up, right? And I think because this rapper brought out that rapper or you were down with this crew, you know what I'm saying? So you had some kind of toolage, you had like a, almost like, it was almost like uh, a father, fatherhood you know, you, had to, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. Without that, now everybody's copying each other. So now it's okay to copy the next dude and, and they have no wisdom because they don't know that their career is only, only going to last two years. Every two years, somebody new come out. Mm -hmm. When you got Nas and people who've been schooled, got 13 albums, they've been out for 20, 30 years. Cube selling 35 years of being in rap, you know what I'm saying? These kids don't, don't understand what they're doing because they, they haven't been, I think, taught. So right now, it's, it's just off the chain. So they're fatherless. So nobody's telling them not to talk about what you're talking about. And so record company's like, man, we need a record like this. That dude's saying he, he killed this girl and shot this dude and, and robbed this and he's selling dope and he, he got a gun, he got houses, he got a rent. He just spent a million dollars at the strip club. Okay. And I put, so it's sad. Nobody say, hey man, don't, don't do that. Wow. You think that, um, okay, um, you still like like how about the the when you're dealing with like your health? You spoke about diabetes, and I want to touch that before we get off here. Just like how important it is mm -hmm. um, to um, you know maintain. How do you maintain it? I just talked to a friend of mine, and he's going through it right now. What can you? He's, he's diabetic. Yeah. What can you uh, say to encourage somebody out there that might be going through? Um. First. Get a full phys physical blood work. Have them take, it's going to be like six tubes of blood. Wow. Check everything, cholesterol, heart, diabetes, everything. Get everything checked out. Um, after that, if you have diabetes or pre-diabetic, consult um, a dietitian. Don't take the word of anybody. Mm -hmm. It's my professional because there's a lot of foods that we eat that we might think it's okay for us. And it, it'll spike your sugar and keep your diabetes going, keep your wow. sugar levels high. Um, diabetes, your blood is thin, thinner than water. Wow. So when your heart pumps, it's, it's so easy for that blood to go down, all the way down to your feet. I'm six feet tall and it come back up to my heart. You know what I mean? So if you put water, sugar in water, it's turning to syrup. So if you got that sugar that you're ingesting and you have nothing to break it down, it's going to turn that, that blood to syrup. So now it's gonna have, it's gonna go down to your feet and have a hard time coming back up. Now you got neuropathy in your feet. And now your heart's pumping extra hard. And now you have strokes. You know, it messes with every organ. Every organ needs blood to flow through it. Now your eyes, you're going blind. Now you can't sleep. Now you got sleep apnea, you start breathing. And so, uh, uh, like, you might think, oh, I'm gonna eat Cheerios. It's gonna lower my whatever. If you look at any processed food or any, any rich food, it ha it'll turn into sugar and spike your blood sugar. Have you? And so he needs to seek a, a dietitian to, to to get their uh, to check what they eat regularly and and correct it and and, and you know uh, change their diet and exercise. A lot of us don't exercise. 
Diabetes, we walk right into diabetes. You know, we stopped exercising around 40. We ain't at the gym. We ain't at the park with the homies. We got kids. We got bills. We stopped working out. Then you're, you're having house parties. You got the barbecue chicken and the macaroni and cheese. Everything we eat is bad for us. Barbecue sauce has honey that turns into sugar. Macaroni and cheese, the, no, the noodles are white. They turn into sugar. That cheese turns into sugar. French fries. Just gr- don't the, eat nothing at all. The green, no, you can eat stuff from the earth. Eat salads. Mm. Eat breads. You know what I mean? But uh, how many men actually love to eat salad? We're conditioned not to. But uh, somebody who's about to die from diabetes would be a saladologist. <laughs> that part. That's He's, real talk. You know what I'm saying? You know, they're eating carrots and, and apples for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? So... So anybody, uh, the, the symptoms of diabetes are you pee a lot and you're thirsty. And you pee a lot, you're mm-hmm. thirsty. You're tired all the time. You're tired. You always feel like you need sleep. You didn't get enough sleep. Um, if your feet get numb, mm-hmm. you know, you lay, you lay on your side and, and with your knees together like this. And all of a sudden your feet are numb. You're like, damn, you know, those are the signs. And I had them when I had diabetes, but it didn't get checked out. You know what I'm saying? I just happened to get checked out and found out I had it. And I told six or seven brothers that around me. Every day, complaining about the same stuff. We eating the same. We're going to have the same issues. Right. But since I, I got it, they're like, oh, he, well, I might have it. Let me go get checked out. I told all the niggas checked out. I told the story before that mm-hmm. six mm-hmm. out of seven had diabetes when they had prostate cancer. So right. we need to get checked out. We need to figure out what we're eating and how it's affecting us and what not to eat and try to eat what to eat. Figure out what to eat that you might like. There's a lot of things out there that's good for us to eat that you can make it taste like something. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That you don't have to feel like I'm gonna eat like a bird. But you know, you you, uh, you definitely gotta switch it up because everything we eat is bad for us. We go to Popeyes, we get a soda. That soda don't turn into sugar. We go get French fries. The batter is flour, turns into sugar. The grease you put it in turns into sugar. The potato turns into sugar. And then we got the fried chicken. Same thing. The batter is made out of flour. The grease, all that's going to turn into sugar. The bread is going to turn into sugar. So you might, might as well eat a plate of sugar. This one tastes as good. Yeah, it, it tastes better. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? It's killing your body. Now, it's killing you get your what body. we call the itis. We always say we get the itis, right? That's your body trying to process all that bad stuff. And it, and it, and it makes your blood thick like sugar. So that insulin has got to break all that. You just poured a whole bunch of sugar. You overdosed on sugar. Every time you get eat and you get tired, you overdose on sugar and your body's trying to break all that sugar down. And then you kind of get back up. When you eat, you should be charged up. It's supposed to be fuel. You eat the right meal, you pumped up, you ready to go for the day. So we eat, te- we eat terrible, man. I watch, I watch so many people, we smoking cigars. We smoking cigars, we drinking alcohol, we got, got the greasiest chili, chili sheep's fries with the jalapenos. and. That's what's good. That's the good stuff. That's the good stuff. <laughs> I'm right over now. Right. right. So, so go ahead and get in line for the diabetes. You know what I'm saying? Because it's coming your way. You know what I'm saying? That thing is going to come in there with yeah, a bow. Wow. You asking for it. Wow. So, so yeah, get checked out. Change your diet. Exercise every day. <coughs> There's a, I do what I, I tell people to do a, um, a, a five minute walk. Mm-hmm. Every day, walk five minutes. You have five minutes. A commercial is two, three and a half minutes, right? You yeah. have five minutes. When you walk, Two minutes, two and a half minutes, one way and stop, and then turn around and walk back, that might be a block or two. You keep walking, you can be walking three or four blocks mm-hmm. within that time. Before you know it, you might start jogging. Two and a half minutes up, two and a half minutes back. Before you know it, I, I was running, like sprinting like I stole something, 10 blocks, <laughs> two and a half minutes, and then back. I lost wow. like 50 pounds, boy. Wow. And there, you know, it, it changes everything. So, and diabetes will knock you out by 50. You know, people die in their sleep, that's because they have sleep apnea from diabetes. Mm-hmm. Damn. Man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk man, 101. We're going to do this every guys, six man. months, man. It's yeah, been a year on, since uh, Payback was on on here. He's a regular on the show, man. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> shout out to all the people from Suge Knight, DOC, uh, all the different people, you know, the Ruthless Movement, yep. all the stuff that you, you know, seen. Snoop Dogg, Dog Pound. What was the name of that uh, song that you produced? Uh I play bass on. You play bass on New York, New York, big city of dreams. Yeah, the yeah, dog and he I mean, wasn't a bunch of singles. You know, but he wasn't in. Line, the, he know. wasn't in the beef. He wasn't in the beef. He just nah. he sent me KD man shout out KD in the building. He back. Yep. Um, man, like I said, man, it's so many different things that E Forty man. That like I've My never boy. like like you and E Forty. How how did you and E Forty get cool? Me and E Forty. Um, I had a. Uh, Met Spice One. Man, you talking about the dude, dude, 
Dung, dung, yeah. dung, 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 yep. dung, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And what was the name of that song? Uh, what was the name? It was, a, it, was a, it was about a bunch Something of drinks. Something proof, yeah. Yeah, 187 proof. 187 <laughs> proof. Hey, Spice a fool, man. Boy, that's, that's another time to beast, brother, man. man. So, 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 uh, I, th- I think I told you that story how. No, how, you didn't. How I met Spice one? No, you might have told me that, but you didn't tell me about E 40, so that's what I'm trying to get well, to. I try to cut it short because I can be here all day. So <laughs> I played a whole bunch of beats for Spice One. He liked a couple beats. He wanted to do a song with E40. And so 40 is the man. That's like, you know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ in the Bay. Hey. So uh, so he, he flew me up to the, to Oakland and I produced the song and he had E40 rap on it. Mm. Wow. And then, and then I got cool with, uh, uh, with the whole click, his whole family. And the there. click. Sugar T, D Shot, B Legit, everybody who came up. Everybody. And Mossy, you know, everybody comes up to the to the to the session. When he does a session, everybody in the mama shows up. So they, everybody was there, I get to meet everybody. And remember I told you how I was riding the credit from Ice Cube? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you can kind of smudge words and I'm a hustler, I didn't give a damn, right? So I I can say, you know, I work with Ice Cube or I worked with Notorious B. I. G. But I just played bass for him. So you don't know if I produced them or played bass. Mm-hmm. So they got uh, Clint work with such and such and such and such, <laughs> such. They think I produced them. Yeah. I just played bass. I didn't even have a drum machine, right? I didn't have a drum machine when I met 40 or Spice. I told you the game I did, right? So so they don't know. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to tell them. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, all right, man, you got some beats. So I cook something up for you, whatever, whatever. And I borrow a friend's drum machine and make some beats. And all that, you know, I like that. Then boom, I'm working with them. Now I'm getting the money to buy my, my, my kits, my drum machine. So... 40 is hella, he's super cool, man. He's like, that's my brother, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, 40, 40 is probably, 40 and Dub C and Ice Cube are the realest brothers I've ever met in rap. Wow. That's a big shot. Never changed. How big they got, how much money they got, you still talk to them the same, mm-hmm. they still act the same, and they down, they, they, some, they the realest people, man. The realest. The, the realest people, man. Like, let me give you an E40 story. So, you know, I'm working with Yo-Yo. And this is early, mid-90s. So I'm working with Yo-Yo. She's doing a show at the state at the um, sports arena downtown LA, right? Or near USC, where it's near, the Coliseum. And so it was her, Kid Frost, West Side Connection, E-40, and a couple other groups, right? And so I'm like, so I, she, well, we just left rehearsal. I said, well, I'm gonna go leave and, and go to the show and catch the niggas, you know, before you get on or whatever. Mm-hmm. So she's not gonna put your name at the wheel call. So I went there to the wheel call. She didn't put my name in yet. She didn't send her whole list. Mm. So I'm like, damn, so I know everybody down there who's performing. So I go around to the to the rear inches where the artists are coming in. So many artists were like, yeah, I'm cool, peace. I, I got an extra pass for you, bro. I'm like, come on, man, you know, like work the, y'all go in with four of y'all, one guy come out with the two passes, you know what I'm saying? I have my homeboy Shaku with me, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, it's just us. And everybody kept fronting on us. So he 40 pulls up. I don't know, I only did one song with 40 at this point. I don't know him like that. So I'm like, yo, 40, man, I was supposed to be in with, yo, y'all running the whole shit. And he was like, man, say, say, you know, don't say no more, man. He said, look, I need two more passes. And then the promoter guy was like, wait a minute, it says seven and you have seven here. You know, it's two guys, it's too much. 40 said, if you don't give me them two passes, I ain't performing. Mm. And started walking back to the limo. They said, 40's about to leave, man. We need to get two more passes. Some fool ran out there, two more passes and handed to us. You better know it. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah you nigga, better know real it. Real shout out nigga. To, shout out to E. Real. One of the realest, one of the coldest men to do it, man. man. I mean, you know, man, that thing. E. The 40. He gonna the be a, he gonna be at Houston um, rodeo this this of course time. of course so I've been I've been working with him since ninety seven since that one time with with Spice yeah to to now like last year I sold him a beat like wow I, I'm constantly it's probably an album that's out right now so I'm constantly working with him and anything I connect him with like I've always got him uh, mm-hmm. featured on people's you know tracks whatever people buy a track from me and they're like who can you get I'm like forty. And then they'll they'll work out whatever with forty, and he'll get paid and whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I've always he's always like if I call him right now, he gonna pick up the phone. What's up? What's up, boy? You know. And I learned a lot from him. He, he, he'll tell me anything. You know what I'm saying? All his secrets. He'll, you know, he ain't trying to hold it for me. He's trying to he's trying to let you win. Yeah, man. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thank y'all for the, for the uh, water. 
There you go. <laughs> hey, Clint Payback said, been Big on Boss Talk 101. We'll see y'all again, Mr. man. Yeah. Hey, man, make sure you got like, subscribe to the channel, man. Make yeah, sure you man, guys. This is the realest. This is the realest. Uh, go check out all the videos. This Everything podcast, we do. Man. This ain't Hollywood. This ain't None no press. Of that. We just talking. They ain't got no, nobody breathing by their neck. We just, just talking. You know what I'm saying? We just, just a conversation. It's them. It's a, that's it. Man. They own it. But they bossing. They the boss. It's real talk. <laughs> boss Talk 101. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Man. Oh, yeah. And we out. Shout out.